Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we, who have been raised with him through baptism, may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, 
be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. A lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The Easter Gospel from Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. 
You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I realize that it feels a little strange to be celebrating Easter and not to be together here at church. And maybe we can take some comfort in the fact that that this is not the first Easter that Christians have celebrated outside of a church building. In fact, this year, more than any other, perhaps we can relate in some very small way to how those women were feeling on that very first Easter as they went to Jesus' tomb, probably confused, worried, a bit out of sorts, going to find their Lord and to worship him in the only way they knew how, given the circumstances, to anoint his body for burial. On Friday, of course, they had been there when Jesus had tested positive for death by a Roman's spear pierced into his side with blood and water flowing out. And they saw Jesus' body taken off that cross and laid into a borrowed tomb. And at the first moment possible, early that Sunday morning, they woke up. And probably with minds a little sleep-deprived and with lives certainly turned upside down, they made their way by that early morning light to find their Lord Jesus. Of course, we know what they found when they got there. They found that the stone which they were worried about, it was rolled away. And then when they looked inside the tomb, they were startled to see a young man dressed in white. The other Gospels tell us this was an angel who had a startling message for them. Don't be afraid. He is not here. He has risen. Go and tell his disciples. Go and tell Peter. We might have expected the women to respond like we do. He is risen indeed, or maybe with high fives and hallelujahs all the way around. And yet we're surprised to find that their reaction is a little more real if you had just seen an angel when you were expecting to find a corpse. They left the tomb. They fled from the tomb, trembling, astonished at what they had just heard and what they had seen. And I wonder how the angel felt to see these women running away from him I can almost imagine the angel going up and reporting back to God the Father saying, I told them just what you told me to say, and they ran away. And God the Father looking pleased as he listened and then responding, this one's going to take a while to sink in. The women had heard that first Easter sermon, the clearest and simplest sermon ever given, he has risen, and yet it was going to take some time for it to sink in. For us, obviously, Easter and its reality is still sinking in today. And maybe there is a silver lining this year. With all of the extras that typically adorn our Easter celebration, all of them taken taken away, perhaps what we have more than other years is some clarity. Like taking the wrapping off of a gift, what you see is the gift itself. What happens when there are no Easter dinners with friends and family gathered around a table or no Easter egg hunts, no Easter pictures in your fancy Easter clothes after you've just attended Easter church, no Easter brunches, not in person at least, no Easter choirs and not even in-person Easter worship? What happens when the sights and the smells that we associate with our Easter celebrations are taken away, when they take a year off? What's left, perhaps, is this, that we who are gathered feeling a little bit like those women, confused, maybe worried, a bit out of sorts, we find clarity. What's left is this, Christians scattered in their homes, using the light of their laptop screen to find their way to a YouTube YouTube channel to hear a messenger tell them, He has risen. And don't you see this? that that is enough. In fact, is it possible that when we lose all these other things and are more like those women, uh, raw and beaten down, it's not less that we find on Easter, but more. That taking away everything else, we realize that we still have everything. 
we still have everything because Jesus is still alive and that Easter message is still ringing in our ears. He has risen. And even if it's sinking in, what this really means for us, even if it's still sinking in this morning, we know that it's true and that it changes everything. These are, are not just empty words. Just imagine if this afternoon President Trump held a press conference and he said, the pandemic, it, it's all over and business is back to life as normal. Schools should restart as of tomorrow. The threat is gone. No more threat. Would you believe any words that he said? You would probably want some evidence. You'd want some proof. You'd want to know that this invisible threat that we've been told for the last month that you can't be within six feet of someone else because of it, we'd want to know that the threat is really gone. You realize that words don't, don't themselves prove anything, even if they're spoken by the President of the United States. And yet here we are, gathered on this morning, to hear these words, He has risen. A, a bigger announcement has never been made. And what we find in these words is not just the message. We find the proof. We find the evidence, the guarantee itself that these words are true. He has risen means this, that all of this world's sin, your sin and mine, was laid on Jesus on his cross, and his sacrifice was complete. His resurrection is the proof. He has risen means that our Lord, who gave us promises to live on, our Lord cannot break his word. He has risen means that all of the things that are wrong in this world will one day be made right. It means that our Lord, the living Savior Jesus, is not dead somewhere in a tomb in Israel. No, he is very much alive and he is with us even now, today, where two or three are gathered in his name. Given the circumstances of these past months, Maybe you found yourself like me, thinking a little bit more about the reality of your own death, that this will come. Or perhaps seeing the statistics or hearing the stories of people who have died because of the illness has brought to your own mind people that you've had to say goodbye to. Realize that Jesus' resurrection also speaks, and maybe most pointedly speaks, to death itself. He has risen means that death no longer has a claim on those who are found in Christ. He has risen means that death has been swallowed up by victory. There's a reason that the only thing that you get to see in church this morning is the baptismal font and the paschal candle lit behind me. You realize that that candle is lit, it's at a person's baptism, lit at Easter and during the season of Easter and then again at a person's funeral. And it's lit to remind us of this, that in our baptism, we were connected to Jesus, to his death, and yes, to his resurrection. So that in Jesus, we find forgiveness for our sins. And in Jesus, we find life, life eternal. So that those who die in Jesus have life in him. And that one day, even this body, which will die, this body will be called back from the dead, raised again to live with God forever. He has risen means death is done. And it means that we are alive and we're alive right now and God has a purpose for us as we live. We've been praying, I know, a lot these past weeks, probably prayers that sound like this, Lord have mercy, come Lord Jesus, come and, and take us home, deliver us from this world of sorrow but include in your prayers that God would also use you, one he has made alive in his son, that he would use you now. Those women that left the tomb, trembling and afraid, who fled away, the reality of Easter did sink in, and the fears that made them flee on Easter morning, they were replaced by the joy of knowing their Lord was alive. And the confusion of not understanding what it all meant was replaced by the peace of knowing that Jesus was their Savior. In fact, we know that they gathered with other believers to be encouraged and to encourage them. And, and we know that we will too someday. 
gather again and it will be a joyful day. And in the meantime, like those women, we use our lives in service to our Lord and to others. And this is perhaps a difficult thing for us right now as we consider our Easter celebration and the things that we're missing, knowing that you may not be able to hold your, your grandkids this year for Easter or gather around that table with friends and with family. There's probably a hole of some kind, a hole left because of the circumstances this year. Yet also see this, that God has also opened up doors and of opportunity for us to be his people right now whether you are, are single or married, whether you are furloughed from work or working from home or one of those essential employees still out in the real world working or an, an essential employee in your home teaching a fourth grade math lesson at your kitchen table, whether you are a student, wherever you are, God has put you right where he wants you with good works that he's prepared in advance for you to do. Open your eyes to see them, uh, seize them, in your homes, in your jobs, in your relationships with others. Pray for others. Pray for your church. Pray for our country. Pray trusting that God will always keep his word. I know that this Easter is going to be a memorable one for all of us. We'll look back and, and say, remember when we went to Easter church in our pajamas or Remember when we gathered for our Easter brunch and we were all online sitting at our kitchen tables? I also pray that the reality of Easter sinks in just a little bit more this year with everything else stripped away. We find that still we have everything in that sweet, simple message. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We join our voices confessing the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that they might tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your almighty power to save. Have mercy on the sick and all who suffer in our midst. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant renewed health as a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief, they might abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe every tear from all faces. Rejoicing to join in the eternal alleluias of the innumerable angels in festal gathering and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and the spirits of the righteous made perfect, we lay these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.